Please join me in the call to worship. Christ asked Peter if he loved him. Peter Peter affirmed affirmed three three times times his love of the Lord. Lord. Christ asks us if we love him. We We affirm affirm our our love love of the Lord Lord in our our worship. Christ calls us to demonstrate our love and service. Lord, Lord, help help us to witness to your love in the ways in which we care care for others. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the invocation. God of power and might, let your love shine on us and through us to others. Take the blindness of our eyes and our hearts. Give us the joy of knowing and serving you in all that we say, think, and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, please join me in the prayer of confession. We rejoice in the wonder of your resurrection, O Christ. But then we tend to sink back in our ways of thinking, behaving, responding to people's needs. We can dance with the angels and all humankind on Easter Sunday. But the days following cause us to slip back in a faith or despair. Forgive us when we easily become distracted by our own cares, wonders, and we needs of others around us. Forgive us when we forget your power and love for us. Charge us up with your spirit and set our hearts to dancing. Give us a spirit for rejoicing and well-being when we are most afraid. Amen. Sing, shout, and rejoice. Jesus calls you to serve because of his love for you. He believes in you and all the gifts you have been given. So do not be afraid. Christ is with you always. Amen.
make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. <coughs> may I be like you. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. I'll be reading Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you have lifted me out of the depths, and I will not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down in the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm, but when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down into the pit? <clears throat> Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be the merciful to me. Lord, be my sackcloth, and clothe me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Mm. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Amen.
actually have taken the liberty to shorten the um, New Testament reading this morning just because we might be here till about 2 o'clock if I don't. So I'm going to begin reading um, John chapter 21, and I'm going to be reading starting at verse 12. So if you can move down to that. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dare to ask him, Who are you? And of course, this is after Jesus' resurrection. So they didn't recognize him. Knowing that it was the Lord. But Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them. And likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he had been raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my sheep or feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to them, said to him, tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And by this time, Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things, and you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, then feed my sheep. Hmm. Wow. Has anybody ever asked you the same question a few times over? My children are starting to do that to me. I think they think I didn't hear the first time, and maybe that's true. I blocked it out. I just wasn't going to go there. But I find that sometimes when you get to the point where it's the second time or even the third time you're being asked, you better pay attention. Because obviously this is something that Jesus wanted to hear and hear a response from Peter. And it must have been a very important question. And how many times have we not asked that of our spouse? Do you really love me? With what you just did, do you really love me? Yeah. We know that where that is coming from, don't we? I don't know. A lot of us now have been married 25. I remember when it was my 25th wedding anniversary, 30th, 40th. And now it's hitting near the 50th coming up in the next year and a half. And I can't believe I've even arrived at that point. And that I've actually been married to the same guy. All the, he looks a little different than he did back in 1974. But he's the same guy with a few changes and the same with me. A few changes, a few more gray hairs few more wrinkles under the eyes, but we're still in love. Hmm. You know, I was reading a statistic the other day, and I remember in 1981, the statistics of marriage staying fully married and not getting divorced was about 50%. And do you know that statistic actually has gone down? Now in 2000, or at least last year in 2021, statistically there are about 45% of everyone that gets married in America ends up in divorce. And you think, well, that can't be right. That number can't be right. Well, it's true because why, why do you think that number's gone down? A lot more people today aren't getting married. They're living together, but they're not getting married. I think they all want to test the waters for a while. (laughs) Figure out how rough the sea is, 
and whatever before they step into the pool and make that commitment. You know, I, there might have been a, a bit of wisdom in that for a longer engagement period when I think back to that, that maybe that's what that was all about, that you'd be married or at least looking towards marriage a year, two years away, so that you would have that trial time of getting to know each other to find out for a year or two whether this is the one you want to spend the rest of your life with. Wow. And then I know a lot of people that said, I do, and they were married within two weeks. And they're still married. Isn't it amazing? But I can say that honestly, that's got to be the crux is love. <laughs> Whether you give it a long time or a short time or whatever, when you're making that commitment, it's about loving, about really caring of someone else. There was a little, a young man that came to his dad and he says, Dad, you know, I think I'm ready to get married. And his father said, well, how do you know that? He said, well, Dad, he said, I, I, I really think I love her. I really think, well, how do you know you even love her? Well, he said, last night when I was kissing my girlfriend goodbye, her dog came and bit me in the leg, and I never even felt the pain until I got home. <laughs> He was comatose, I'll tell you that. But I guess he meant to say that nothing else mattered. It was her and I, and we were in a moment of intimacy and connectedness, and there's nothing else like it. I guess the question I would have this morning for all of us is, are we still in love? And that can mean to so many people. It doesn't mean just to a spouse, husband and wife, or even a good friend. I mean, we can love. I have some wonderful friends that I absolutely adore, and I love them. But we have to ask ourselves, do we love our spouse? Do we love our friends? Do we love God? Do we love our community? Do we love our nation? Do we love the world? Do we love somebody that lives over in Africa or lives in Japan? Or maybe somebody that even lives in Russia? That's a hard one. Yeah. No. They're people and they have families and children and they go to work every day maybe a little blinded at the moment, but they're people. And you know what? God created them just as much as God created us. Yeah. I know when Gary and I got married back in 1974, a wedding approximately in New York, New Jersey area ran about $10,000, believe it or not, way back then. Now, that was new to me because I came from Massachusetts and we didn't spend that kind of money on a wedding. And when I got to New York and met my husband's family and my family lived in New Jersey, my parents, we realized that that was the going rate for having a reception and getting married was $10,000. I'm like, whoa. And that was 48 years ago. Can you imagine what a wedding and what a wedding does cost today just to get married? And I remember seeing a, a couple that came on to Dr. Phil's program one time. I was home for having surgery, and I usually don't get him when I worked because I was just not there at that time. But I remember a bride and her fiancé were on this show, and they were talking about in the 
the dilemma was, are we going to spend this kind of money on one day of our lives? And of course, the bride kept saying, well, this is the day, this is one day, this is the biggest day of my life. And the groom-to-be kept saying, but aren't we going to want to buy a house? And aren't we going to want to have children? And aren't we going to need to have two cars? If we spend, and that they were asking at that time, this $30,000 for a wedding, he was like, I don't think that's really reasonable. Well, you can imagine that two people had this discussion, and obviously they couldn't settle it among themselves. They had to come to the TV audience <laughs> of millions and millions of people <laughs> to get our opinion to figure out if they should spend $30,000 on a wedding or not. I, I don't even remember what the outcome was. I think Dr. Phil sent them both to counseling, if I remember correctly. And that's probably what they needed. It is amazing to me how much time and effort sometimes goes into one day. And I used to think the same thing about when I gave birth to my children. I did all this preparation work, painted the nursery, went to Lamaze classes, <laughs> Remember all that? Practice, practice, practice. And then I'm thinking, we do all this for the arrival or the beginning of a marriage, but what do we do for them after they come? Hmm. How do we support people in their marriage once they're married? How do we take care of children and raise them and try to figure out how to be a good parent? Oh, they showed us how to birth a baby. They showed us what the baby needed to wear and what we needed to feed the baby, but never how to take care of it. And maybe that's where Jesus brings this in. It's really all about love. <laughs> What are you willing to do to love somebody? You know, today couples marry for all different reasons. And I've heard them all, believe me. Well, it's just convenient. Okay, that's a good one. Well, it's a lot cheaper to live too than it is to live by yourself, which is true. You get free sex whenever you want it. Don't count on it. It's a workable financial agreement. You're laughing, I can see. Okay. That's all right. I need that, that promotion and that support in the back of me and you are doing a great job. Absolutely. No extra charge. Or somebody told me one time, well, that's what my mother wants me to do. <laughs> okay, whatever. And I used to say, you're kidding, right? You're really kidding, right? No. And I think back, what has held so many marriages and relationships and commitments together? over the years and generations even before us. It was really sacrificial love. I don't know, maybe we think as a society and as a people, we don't have to sacrifice anything to be in love. And I don't think that's how Jesus saw it. And you know, the funny thing about it is three days or so, a week maybe, a few days earlier, before this encounter with Peter, Peter had an opportunity to identify himself with Jesus. Remember that? Before the crucifixion? And then after, aren't you a disciple? Aren't you a follower of Jesus? Oh, no. 
Oh, no, not me. No. And he did it three times. Maybe that's why Jesus asked him three times. You denied me three times. I'm going to ask you again three times. Do you love me? You know, loving somebody I have discovered over 48 years of marriage is not just lip service. (laughs) I don't know if it ever started out that way, but I think we were probably in more of an awe and infatuation and whatever. But when the rubber hit the road and you realized what marriage was all about and that you were going to live with this individual hopefully for the rest of your life. You began to realize that it's not even (laughs) 50-50. It's 150, both ways. Yeah. And then we can ask ourselves the question, you know, do you really love me? when I'm the only one getting up and feeding the kids and changing diapers? Do you really love me when I go out with the girls, but then I come home and I don't want to spend time with you? Do you really love me if I take all of our money and I spend it on my own self-pleasures, but I think little of you? Do you really love God? If we say that we are Christians, but we don't live by the commandments and the suggestions that he has given us to live full lives. Do you really love me? And I think we have to ask ourselves that in many different relationships, but most of all, I think we have to begin with our relationship with God first. Because if that is in a good perspective and a good relationship with God, if we are on that same plane and we know that God loves us unconditionally and we do the same, then I think our love will spill over into every aspect of our lives if our love for God is really true and pure. You know, in Romans 8, 35 through 39, it's amazing, but it says this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine or nakedness, or danger, or even the sword. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long, and we are considered as sheep to the slaughter. Know that in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And Paul says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels or demons, neither the present, the future, and I would ask even the past, nor any power or height or depth, not anything else in all creation is able to separate us from the love of Christ. If we understand that and know that, How can we not want to love him? Amen. The song that Jesus gave me, it was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody, tis a melody. a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings
brings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. With heaven's harmony In my heart there rings a melody There rings a melody of love Will be my endless fame and glory With the angels I will sing Will be a song with glorious harmony when the courts of heaven ring, in my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. As we go to the Lord in prayer, I know there are many needs on your own hearts as well as those that have been mentioned in our bulletin. Please continue to pray, especially for Lewis today, who had double knee replacement. And um, he is in our later service, and I did go out and visit with them. And he is really doing well. I am just amazed. Sometimes you have to take that jump and that leap of faith to just do it. <laughs> So pray for him and those that are mentioned in our prayer concerns. There are many here, so please remember them as well. Let us pray. Compassionate and glorious God, you hear our cries today and our pleas for help. We may enter the dark night of the soul at times, and we find ourselves weeping. But we also know that you promised us joy in the morning, and that when you hear our petitions, you come and you meet our need, and you answer our prayer according to your good and purpose in our life. So we gather here today in the name of your son, Jesus, and we bring our needs and our concerns to you. So have mercy on us. Love us, forgive us, and help us. And may we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And as Jesus gathered with his disciples, on that Monday, Thursday, he gathered with them and he took a cup of wine and then he took a loaf of bread and he broke it and then he blessed it. And he says, as you eat and drink of these emblems and as you eat and drink of this wine and bread, Every time you do this in the future, remember me. And I think he was saying, every time you do this, remember how much I love you. And he knew that in a few days from there, he would be giving himself his life for all of us. Boy, that's a great love. Let us pray for the elements. God, we thank you for these elements of bread and wine that you continually lay before us 
so that we can remember the greatest gift. Your life, your acceptance, your forgiveness that you have given to each one of us. As we ingest them today, may we remind ourselves of the sacrificial life and the love that you gave to each one of us. We ask this and pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. that you feel a little bit more loved. <laughs> I hope you do, because God does love you. Yeah. Even when we goof up, God loves us. So go in peace. And may you be surrounded every day by the love of God. Amen. Amen.